No, this is when uh, this is like my last year in Okinawa. I think is when this happened. Oh, so really? yeah, there's no telling what fungus we had going on out there with everything growing and turning. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It was a very it was a very wet environment. Uh, <laughs> so, you know what else is a wet environment? <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 106 for Thursday, the 15th of December, 2016. This is a show where two lifelong friends talk about geek stuff and whatever else comes to mind. I'm Amos, that's Kent, and tonight we have yet another insane guest. Like, how do, how are we getting these people? Like, they've like it's in, it's it's ridiculous to me that we're actually getting these people to come on our stupid little show. Well, it's. It, I guess there was a, a breakout at the asylum because you just said that we had another insane guest on our yeah. show. So well, it's just crazy uh, to me that we have him. So yeah, so we have Brett the Amtrekker Roundsville. What's going on, Brett? Hi, gang. I'm actually super pumped because it wasn't until this moment that I found out that I was insane, which makes the rest of my life going forward so much easier. <laughs> that would be a good crutch to have. All those man. limitations you've been living oh, man. by all these years. <laughs> I'm phoning everything in from here on out. That is the best get out of jail free card ever. That's such a good get out of jail free card that you can literally murder people and get away with it. Yes, you know George, George Carlin always asked the question: of Why do why do people why do the people that hear the voices in their head always tell them to kill somebody? How come the voices in your head never tell you go take a shit on the salad bar at Wendy's? You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've like, actually heard that that uh, like schizophrenia is cultural. Like uh, I want to say, like in India or something, the voices in the head mostly do say like very pleasant things to you. <laughs> I take a shit on the salad bar. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty cool. Well, you know, I mean, d- depending on where you are in India, I mean, like you know, I've seen an idiot abroad. I know there's some areas in India that are not so pretty. Oh, well, that's just probably because- true. But the schizophrenics don't live there. The schizophrenics only live in the nice neighborhoods there. <laughs> it's topsy turvy. The world is upside down. <laughs> See, that's that's why we just can't get along, right there. That's that's why there's so much conflict in the world because some places just have it nice and easy when it comes to mental illness. <laughs> so Amos, have you had an insane week? Um yeah, like the preparations for this damn streamathon are are oh well, I, I don't first of all, last year it was crazy that I was gonna be on for twenty four plus hours continuously, just in one long stream. Oh yeah. It was oh, yeah. crazy that it worked, and it was crazier that we had people that actually came in and watched. We had several people jump on and, and join in the conversation and stream for a while. And now this year we've decided to take it up one notch. We, yeah, we, dude, we took it up like six notches. We, I we, think. we went, we we elevated a floor of the asylum. Like we're we have our we're in our own <laughs> wing now. We're not just on the main floor with just you know random people walking around. We have taken it over. It's uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I think that's exactly what it is because it's getting pretty crazy. Um, yeah, it's pretty awesome, dude. We've got people like Bonnie Brushwood. We've got hot beverages, crunchy Jackie Hearn. Uh, Scotty Emo, John Teasdale, um, <laughs> this goes on. We've got a, a ton of people that are going to be streaming for this thing and just trying to coordinate all, all you know, everyone's preferential times and, mm-hmm. and getting the charity thing put together. It's a, it, it's a task. Man. Yeah. And in fact, we're already 10% into our goal. Uh, we had set a goal of a thousand dollars. We're already 10% there and we haven't even officially began the event. It's, <laughs> it's ridiculous. Yeah. It's amazing. So that's that's been my week. Is pretty much just stressing out about that and trying to make sure everything about that is going smoothly. Brett, how has yep. your week been? Uh, my week has been pretty insane. I decided on Monday that in preparation for finding out that I was insane on Thursday, I would just stop baiting. So that was step one. <laughs> that's that works. Uh, no, it's actually been it has been a very crazy week around here, but mostly because of uh, some prep for a relaunch for Mission Pick that we're getting ready, and uh, because there's a five month old here mm-hmm. all of a sudden, mm-hmm. what? and it turns out what? that if there is anything slightly more difficult than raising a four month old, it's raising a five month old, because oh. now she is determined to move places on her own uh, volition. Oh. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and it just gets funner and funner. Just wait. <laughs> uh. I mean, I'm not you, sure. You're not at the point yet where you have to take all your really precious stuff and raise it above your head. Like, you know, no, out, out of reach yet. of yourself, because what will happen is 
you'll be flailing around trying to find a diaper or trying to catch a kid from falling from the ceiling, something like that. You'll be flailing around <laughs> and smack the stuff the baby can't even reach, and it'll fall and break. And then you're like, who can I blame? Like, I, I'm the one, uh. you know. And then it just begins, the self-doubt begins about, uh, about one, about the age of one. The, the father starts build, building self-doubt, and it doesn't stop. My oldest is now seven, 16, 17. And, um, and <laughs> see, see, I'm oh, telling you, I don't know. <laughs> numbers are hard. We've already established numbers are hard. So <laughs> I feel pretty good about this. Now that now that you say the worst thing to worry about is self-doubt, I feel like I had that part of parenthood taken care of at like three. <laughs> <laughs> it's been, been nailing that all the way. <laughs> yeah, that, that sudden sinking in that you're doing everything wrong, but you don't know how to fix it. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. That's where I live. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool how it all just seems to work out. Yeah. You can you can screw up in the biggest way possible, and somehow you end up looking like a hero to your kids. Well, not only that, <laughs> you you end up screwing up all this time, and you you know that you're screwing up. And at the end of the day, you don't know. It's like the greatest lottery ever. It's a it's like a 25 year uh, lottery. You're making all these little tiny bets every single day with every little thing that you're doing, and you don't know in, in for 25 years whether they're going to be a serial killer or win the Nobel well, Peace Prize. Like you, no, you, you kind of, it's kind of a toss-up. <laughs> that's the thing because a lot of these serial killers come from really good families and and you know people that that raise their kids right, and all their neighbors are like, oh my god, I had I had no idea. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, there's a lot of truth to what you just said. <laughs> Now he's really scared. <laughs> I'm, I'm mostly worried that Scarlett will grow up to be a podcaster. That's oh, my biggest fear. Well, well, I can tell you there's zero <laughs> self-doubt there. Podcasting is all about <laughs> confidence and ambition and success stories every day. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> it, this girl is hilarious. She smiles at literally everything. Like, you just put her somewhere, and she's like, yeah, you want to take a picture of this? Do it. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Oh, man. It yeah, that's, how that's, has your week been, man? Oh man, hectic, dude. Along with all the streamathon stuff, my work is trying to send me all over the planet for meetings and things. Uh, I actually I went to San Antonio. I was only there for a day. I, I got there Sunday night, and then I left Monday. Uh, so it was kind of a whirlwind thing, but it was actually it was kind of nice because that's where our, where our headquarters is at. So all these people that I've been talking to on the phone and sending a thousand emails and then, you know, bitching about at the office without them knowing, I actually got to meet them, shake their hands, uh, look them in the eye. That was really cool. Uh, there's a lot of things that you can get done when face -face. all of the people are together in one spot. Oh, yeah. Cause you know how like you, you send an email and they're like, Oh man, no, that's not me. Why don't you try to get a hold of this person? And then you email that person, it goes three days. They don't answer their email and you call them. Like, oh, yeah, that dude went on leave today. It's like, God damn it. So when you have these meetings and everyone involved in a project is in the same place at the same time, it's actually, it, it's, it's pretty nice. Yeah. That, that, I mean, that'd be great for the, uh, for the streamathon thing if we could get everybody in, at one place at one time. And Well, it's funny you say that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's for all of our not. volunteer <laughs> streamers, we're, we're going to be having a... A hangout, a Google Hangout on Saturday. Uh, what what time is that going to be, Amos? It's uh, uh, one p.m. Pacific. One p. One p.m. Pacific, right? So, um, if you are a volunteer, I hope to see you there because that's going to be the business meeting of all business meetings. I think try to nail down some of the the final now, details. Now, for now you're scaring people away. Like I don't even want to be there now. <laughs> <laughs> now we should we should be able to get through all of the stuff pretty quickly, but it, it's going to be a lot easier to you know, like I said, have everyone in the same place at the same time and just. Yeah talk about and uh yeah it should be pretty cool um hey so brett do you um do you do some geeky things oh uh, i do lots of geeky things what uh, would you is the geekiest thing that you did this week? the geek well what what's uh what's our definition of geeky first what's your definition of geeky? is geeky is geeky limited to pop culture or is geeky specifically about going too far in depth into a thing that you probably shouldn't go in depth on uh both yeah, it could definitely be it's, it's, either of those. It's essentially the broadest and, version of the word geek. The broadest definition. The broadest version. All right, in that case, uh, so I have this door in my house that, like, rubs a little bit <laughs> wait, wait, every wait, time wait. you open the door. 
<laughs> and uh, and it wouldn't be a problem except now there's this whole new five month old thing. So I'm trying not to wake her up, even though I work until like two in the morning. And then the door goes, and it's a pocket door, right? Not a regular door. It's a door that slides into the wall. So it's not like you just WD 40 it or whatever. Right. Every time you open it, <laughs> every time you close it back up. So I, in my infinite wisdom, took my entire wall apart <laughs> and then <laughs> pulled the door out and went and bought a new door, put the new door in, put everything back together. And it was at that moment, that moment right there that I discovered there was nothing wrong with the door at all. The problem was the wall. <laughs> the whole wall is crooked. Oh my God. Oh, that's a bummer, man. <laughs> yeah. All that time, the probably money wasted. Yeah. So, uh, are you and also, I'm a renter, and I just kind of, uh, I just kind of randomly do work on the condo just at will, without ever telling my landlord, who may or may not be watching. So, <laughs> stop. <laughs> so, you know, is, is the next project to tear the wall down and rebuild that? No, I actually just before we got on, I think I have finally come to a solution. So, I, I was trying to find a way to push the walls apart from each other. And then I decided, you know what? Everything would be fine if everything was equally crooked. So I took all of the molding off of the door frame and hung it all up at like a slight angle. <laughs> and you can't tell it's an angle at all. And now nothing rubs. It's brilliant. The perfect solution is to mess things up more. Oh, well done. Bro well broke it till it fixes. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, That's, That's awesome. awesome. I, 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 I can't tell you how excited I'm have to, to have a door geek on the, uh, on the show tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I, I probably in an average week would have had something a little bit more pop culture to throw out. But it turns out crooked walls eat up the whole week. There is no content time this week. <laughs> hey, Kent, what would you do this week, man? Man, I did something that I had been meaning to do for quite some time because everybody that I follow on Twitter, I think, has been doing this for basically forever. Uh, I finally downloaded and joined Mission Pick. Uh, oh, wait. super fun game. Highly yeah. recommend. A double plus. So you, you have heard of it, Brett. <laughs> yeah. It's That's super fun. Wait, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So for the uninitiated, not me, by the way. For the uninitiated who have never done the mission, mission pick thing before, explain it in a single sentence, Kent. Uh, come on, Brett. This is free, uh, this is free uh, marketing right here. This is. Oh, I've <laughs> sent out this survey several times. <laughs> I would say that one sentence. The most fun I have ever had looking for something to take a picture of. <laughs> that's that's, not, even, that's that. not even a sentence. That's just a phrase. That's that's not bad. That's yeah. not bad. Um, so I would uh, back when I was in Abilene, we had this weekly photo contest with a local photographer group that would post a little thing, and then you had to go take pictures of it, and then you'd get you know whoever got the most liked likes essentially on the on the Facebook group won the contest and got to pick the next uh, the next topic. And without that particular element of it, you know, this this app. Mission Pick captures that uh, that that sentiment where hey here's a topic go take some pictures of this sometimes it's really easy sometimes it's like orange and you're like oh there's the sun done <laughs> and sometimes right. it's like uh, um, uh, something abstract like time like oh hmm hmm now I actually have to think about it you yeah know? everybody's yeah. taking pictures of clocks yeah somebody's taking pictures My of clocks and you're taking pictures of of like different phases of life and one picture from different pictures, which is the whole taking pictures of pictures or taking pictures of people taking pictures. Especially I have one where I was taking a picture of a person taking a picture of me taking a picture of them. <laughs> and yeah, it was a buddy of mine in Kuwait and totally, I mean, he, he nailed it. Like he was, it, uh, yeah, it was great. Um, but yeah, so anyway, I'm sure you've heard of this, Brett. Like, have you used it? I have. I've used it quite a bit. In fact, I have a really good streak going of uh, something like 700 days, which doesn't make any sense because it hasn't been live for that long. <laughs> so, so you must be. I don't in, know what's you, going you, you on. You must there. have been in on the beta or something, right? Did you get a beta key? Yeah, like very early stages. Yeah. I think <laughs> I had some some say in what was going on. Um, the, but to back up a little bit, legitimately, the the thing that I like to talk about that I really love about it is that it makes 
every day just a little bit different. Like even if you take the same route to work and you see the same stuff every day and mm -hmm. you see the same people every day, like you're still paying attention to different aspects of life in that given day. So like it really like gives you a new lens to look at things through each day. Yeah, and take that cool. as a pun or not, but uh, I totally <laughs> dig it. No, and granted, uh, I am absurdly biased, but you, totally you, you happen so, to be. So, in our listeners that that don't know who Brett is and doesn't know what Mission Pick is, uh, Brett is actually an app developer of Mission Pick, and mm -hmm. uh, I actually I, I was kind of curious. I, I was hoping that you could tell us a little bit about like how that came about, like what where did the idea come from, and how did you like figure out this is something that would make a, a good app. Yeah. Uh, well, before Mission Pick, I was uh, I was a game producer. So with this, like Mission Pick is, or at least it's it's early stages. I like to call it uh, Instagram with a game layer. So so basically, it was turning photography into a game, uh, and that's where the original thought came from. And from that, it was a very basic experience where you like get a, you get a prompt, you take a picture of the prompt, people vote on the prompt. It wasn't social at all. You couldn't like comment on people's stuff. You couldn't follow people. Uh, none of that was there in the early stages. It was literally just a photography game. And since then it's, it, this community has built up around it that has become like pretty much the best part of mission pick. There's lots of people on there. They'll help you out and help you improve your photography, give you a, like a verbal high five whenever you do a good job and stuff. But at its core, it was always coming from that game background. Yeah, and that that's really cool because that's one of the things that that I noticed right off the bat was the the social aspect. Because mm -hmm. the the very first mission that you get is to take your self portrait. Yeah. And within probably fifteen minutes of me posting the the self portrait, I figured out where the notifications thing was. And I had like three people following me, and like six people had liked the photo. I was like, "Holy cow! Who you know? Who yeah, are these yeah. crazy people that just like self portraits?" But each time I would take a picture, like it was kind of the same thing. It was like new people would like discover my photo or my you know my profile. Or whatever. So, so was, yeah, really cool. Really so cool. I, I need to know, Kent. Now the app has been out for a while, and yeah, I I got a, I jumped on the train. I waited until I get back to the states because I, I needed I was waiting because I knew I was coming to, to Alaska. And I was like, oh, once I get there, I'll, I'll fire up Mission Pick, and that'll be just my thing. Like, you know, I actually, right. I like, I like, edged my uh, my excitement for it until I <laughs> got here, so that I would just be able to just you know, like the, the honeymoon of blam, just go Alaska all out of you know. Um, what was it? Was it actually getting Brett to be on the podcast to finally convince you? You know what? I need to try this fucking game before we call, or was it something else? Uh, no, actually, it, getting Brett booked on the show was the catalyst that was like the final <laughs> but uh but no it's it, i wasn't kidding when i said this has kind of been on my to-do list for the forever because i yeah. you know everybody posts about it on on twitter people talk about it you know i've heard brett on other podcasts talking about it um i've heard justin robert young talk about it uh you know and i'm like oh god i i keep forgetting i gotta i gotta try this app out and then when yeah. we when we got brett booked i was like Okay, like I have to do it now. I have to go. I went directly to the app store and got it. So <laughs> <laughs> we're actually like, as of today, we're exactly two weeks away from the biggest, uh, the biggest revamp of Mission Pick we've ever done. It's going to look 100% different on December 29th, and uh, and the people I have helping me on it are just incredible. I like, I can't wait to show everyone, and it's been driving me crazy every day that I can't just like tweet out loading animation or like the new logo or something i just want to share everything right now i'm so excited about it that's <laughs> awesome and is there are there any like sneak sneak peek uh exclusives that we can get like a new feature or uh... um sure yes so uh the smallest new thing that we're adding is that uh so we ran to this this issue that you guys might have noticed especially if you have started coming up with a, some friends on mission pick is sometimes uh so many people will post missions on a photo that you never get around to seeing uh like your friend's missions in the mm -hmm. role mm -hmm. and so if you never see your friend's mission in the role that's the only place where you can like vote on it and give them like a, a higher score which is very important to the game aspect if it were any different then uh you could run up a score just by being more popular than someone else right that's actually so one this thing to notice yeah 
This time around, we're adding like a, a secondary way to like someone's photo. So it, it's actually, it's a pretty cool animation where when you, uh, when you tap anywhere on someone's photo, it like actually high fives the photo and the photo itself like sucks in a little bit to accept the high five. So now you'll, you'll have a score, but then you'll also have like this other just kind of, it's a like basically, but the animation is a high five. Nice. Very cool. So, uh, so it's telling your friends that you like him without actually having to vote for him and therefore playing and ruining the spirit of the game. Yeah, in case you just like don't run into their photo on the roll because of all the other photos that you have to go through or something. Nice. That's actually pretty cool. I'm I'm I'm, I'm yeah. I'm jazzed about it. One of the things that uh, probably the only issue I have with the game is that sometimes if I'm not if I'm like tired, sometimes I'm like ah, I don't remember how to get to this, and then mm. it, then I end up just eh, well okay. And I'll fiddle around with it, fiddle around with it. And by the time I get there, I'm just like, why did I not remember that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what's, uh, what's your username on Mission Pick, Amos? <clears throat> uh, probably Ethan Kane. I sign in. I don't even look at my stuff ah. anymore. Yeah, I think, I think it is Ethan Kane. It's Ethan Kane gotcha. pretty much everywhere. That's me. Awesome. Now, now I'm sitting here like, looking it up. Um, now, I've got a few things to share. I... Listen to Nasillacast, hosted by the one and only Allison Sheridan. Mm -hmm. On her latest episode, she actually put a at about a minute and a half review of our podcast from the night that she appeared on it. And I'm not going to play it. I'm going to let. I'm just going to be in the show in the in the the links everything else. But mm -hmm. if you have not, and I don't think we stress this enough on uh, when when she was on. But if you have not listened to Nasillacast, you need to. It's a fun okay. podcast about technology from a different point of view. She's not a, a tech reporter or even a reporter at all. She's just a person with, um, with an, a, an avid eye for experience, and she likes to share it, and she takes it from a consumer point of view. And uh, it's, it's pretty heavily Apple-biased if you hadn't caught on to that when, when she was on the show. But so, so great, and I'm so thankful for her for throwing that review on there. And, uh, yeah, just, just awesome. No, yeah, and that's that's super awesome. And the thing about Allison, she has such a a pleasant demeanor and just a a way of speaking that you just want to keep listening to her. So, yep. uh, you know, Allison, uh, if you listen to this, thank you for that awesome awesome review, and thanks again for being on our show. That was you're you're incredible. Now, keep doing what you do. Full disclosure, I I knew she did a podcast. I'd listened to a little bit of of a few episodes, and I'd listened to her a lot on uh, on DTNS and things like that. But I'd never really given the podcast just no shit. I'm going to listen to a couple episodes and give it a ch chance. Her mm -hmm. coming on our podcast drove me to do that, and now I'm an avid listener. It's just great. Like you listen to one episode, you want to listen to more. It's awesome. Yeah, so now I've got one one thing that I want to share with you guys. Kent, I told you a couple weeks ago that we don't really get snow up here in Alaska. Like we've get, gotten snow. It's probably snowing right now because it's supposed to snow for like a week straight or whatever. But yeah. the majority of the white that we see in Alaska is not snow because the snow comes, it blows away, it melts, it, it, whatever. It's like the accumulation, the slow accumulation of frost. It's right. Like, it's, it's like, like just frozen it's, ground. Yeah, it's like freezer burn on everything. Well, <laughs> I found the most extreme example of this. We had a day, uh, I want to say it was Monday, where it was uh, from the valley where I live all the way down into Anchorage was just completely fogged out. Unless you were over the river where the water is actually a little warm, a little warmer because of the thermals and stuff like that. It was maybe 300, 500 feet of visibility for the entire day. It got at one point down to where I couldn't see maybe 10, 15 feet in front of me. And wow, of, co geez. of course, it was like one degree outside Fahrenheit. So <laughs> like negative, what, 13 or whatever Celsius. So there sure. was this frozen fog. You could feel it when you breathed in. If you breathed in through your nose, it immediately froze your nostrils and everything else. And I was like, this is kind of crazy. I want to share with you, and I, I don't know if you guys can see this or not. I don't know if, if you got this stream up. But I'm gonna show I'm gonna I'm gonna share it out here. This tree is completely covered in frost from that event. And while it may not look like a whole lot, you can see the ground, all of this is a light layer of snow with just frost upon frost upon frost upon frost. Um if I go to this next one, it's a little bit of a close-up of that tree. And you can see it's like two inches of frost clinging on just from one direction. All of Jeez. the frost is from one direction, ah. from this ice fog. And you can see in the background of this picture, I, I wish I'd gotten a better picture that I could show. 
um, the the fence that leads out to the flat line. It's a chain link fence, and the chain links were all completely filled with <laughs> frost. So it was just an opaque white fence going all the way down for the entire length of the flight line fence all over the entire base. That's crazy. It, I take umbrage to the idea of negative temperatures. Like that <laughs> shouldn't ever be a thing. Right. And it shouldn't be. It doesn't even make sense. Like you can't have negative nature. You don't have <laughs> negative trees. Why would you have negative temperatures? It's unacceptable. And everyone should move to California. Uh, I grew up in California. I'm not moving back. I'm not doing it. I don't know. I don't know about California, but but yeah, I'm I'm digging the uh, for definitely way further south than the frozen tundra that that Amos lives in because that's I'm with you, Brett. Cold temperatures are I, basically cold temperatures are cold. It is so <laughs> so beautiful up here, and I actually like the cold air, um, except for the freezing of the nostrils. It's it's just crisp and clean, and you, you take in a I, full I, breath of air, and you're actually getting a full breath of air, and man, so good. I will agree that it is beautiful. So, Amos, you stay up there and you just take pictures and post them, and then we'll now all we're be talking. Problem solved. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, that's something I've, I've speaking of, of the mission pick, the app, and everything else. That's something I've gotten really bad about. Is just kind of rushing through and not really taking the time to to go out and enjoy and take the pictures and and enjoy the photography that I, that I love to do and everything else. So, definitely something I need to slow down on and really enjoy. But um, it's it's cold out there. <laughs> yeah. So um, that should have sounded like this, but we all know how technicalities go on this show. Hey, Kent, you listen to a uh, a podcast or watch a podcast, but I'm going to go ahead and start with mine this week. Oh, okay. Let's change it up. Yeah, because mine, I actually took Allison Sheridan's advice from two weeks ago when she was on and listened uh, and watched Dr. Elizabeth Loftus, How Reliable Is Your Memory? And once again, the review that Allison gave is spot on. This is a fun, it's, it's deep. Like, you're watching it and you're kind of following along and you're not really laughing, but it, you, you got this smile on your face because you kind of know where it's going. But it starts off with this this story that's just utterly sad. And after that, it, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I remember how it goes, but now that I've seen it, I'm not sure. What? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's how memories are, man. That's how they are. I see what, yeah, I see what you did there. All right. And uh, uh, for you, dude, like, um, you might... Oh, so you took the easy way out. You, you, you watched one that you didn't actually have to say anything about because Allison covered it. She did. Well, she covers most things better than I would anyway, but uh, I had to watch it because so, it was interesting and it popped up on the list. Well, it's like 45th on the list, and I was like, oh, I'm watching it. So, uh, all right, so what's um, – I, I, I don't remember, and I don't have the show notes up. Who who was the speaker that did the did the TED Talk that I watched? Um, let's go with uh, Jai Zhang. Sure, that sounds good. What I learned from 100 Days of Rejection? Yeah, I actually... Step one, fix your name. <laughs> so, Brett, uh, one thing that... One of my selection criteria for picking my talks is finding a speaker whose name that I know Amos cannot pronounce. <laughs> so that's always, it's always a, a source of entertainment for me. Uh, but no, this was, this was actually a really entertaining talk. What I learned from 100 Days of Rejection. So the speaker, I'm not, gonna, I'm not even going to try to embarrass myself with, with that pronunciation. But uh, uh, no, so he was born in China. And when he was a teenager, he decided that he was going to move to the United States to be an entrepreneur. His ultimate goal was to start a company that becomes so big that they're able to buy Microsoft. And uh, the reason that he had that goal is because... Bill Gates came to, uh, I think Beijing is where he was from. Bill Gates, <clears throat> excuse me, Bill Gates went there to speak, and he had the opportunity to see Bill Gates speak, and he was like, "Wow, this guy is awesome. He knows, you know, he knows what he's doing. This guy, he's he's got it. He's figured it out." Yeah. So he, he was uh, really inspired by him. So he comes to the United States. He goes to college. 
he never started that company that uh, you know was basically going to take over the world. And he figured out that the reason that he was still kind of stuck in like a mid-level management position when he was uh, like in his early 30s, I think, he realized that it all goes back to a time when he was six years old and he experienced rejection and uh, basically uh, was was pointed out as being uh, maybe inferior or or just not good enough, basically. And his whole life kind of was modeled after that moment. And basically what would happen is if, if he went to engage someone, whether it was a customer or a boss or a coworker or whatever, if he didn't get the immediate yes, he would back down. Hmm. He would go the other direction. If he got a no, like that was, he was like, oh, okay, sorry for asking and run the other direction. And so he decided that he's going to fix this. So the project that he did, he was going to go 100 days. He made a list of 100 things that he was going to get rejected for. And the whole idea was to desensitize himself to that negative yeah. feel of rejection. And so he came up with with really silly things like ask a stranger if if he could borrow $100 from him. And, you know, just basically walk up to a random person on the street. Um, he Oh, one of the funnier ones, he asked... The, it was like Burger King or something like that, walked in, uh, orders meal or whatever, and then he went up and asked for a burger refill. refill. <laughs> uh, so th that was the whole idea, get desensitized from the, the, uh, the pain of rejection. But what he learned, though, was that the, the uh, engagement, if you stay engaged, you become empowered. So just because you're told no if you continue the conversation, a lot of times opportunity will present itself. So as an example, he, w one of his, his tasks that he made for himself, he knocked on a stranger's door and said, may I plant this flower in your backyard? And the <laughs> like, no. And instead of just saying, okay, sorry for bothering you and running away, he engaged, he, he stayed engaged with the person and he said, you know, may I ask why you don't want this flower? And, the, the the man that answered the door was like, well, you, really, it's because I've got this dog in the backyard that he just he digs up everything. He'll destroy it. And also, I'm not really that into flowers. However, if you go across the street and talk to Connie, she loves flowers. Mm, mm. She was like, OK. So he went across the street, knocked on the door and Connie was like ecstatic about the idea. She's like, <laughs> oh, yes, awesome. Come, yo, come plant this flower. And then it just kind of built from there. He he learned that if he you know the longer he stayed engaged, the more yeses he got, even from the silliest requests. And I just thought it was really cool. It, it's something. It's an exercise. I wouldn't say do this for a hundred days, but it's a little exercise that if, if you if you want something, if you really want something, and you you know, even you know, you want to ask your boss for a raise or whatever it is, uh, just go ask for it. And if you don't. If they, if they don't say yes right away, you know, engage in conversation. And, you know, why? Is there a reason or is there something that I can do to, you know, whatever, just stay engaged? And you never know. The answer might be yes. So I thought it was really cool. Uh, it's so crazy that you brought that up. I've been advising this little team of people who are putting on these events called rejectionathons. Have you heard of this? No. <laughs> Wait, <not. laughs> it's, I mean, it's almost exactly this. You, uh, it's It's set up more like a game. So you like buy a ticket and then uh, you get in uh, like a team of four with, at this rejection of thon and then they give you this list of ridiculous things that you probably shouldn't be able to do. Uh, and it sounds like they've probably also listened to this TED talk. So like one of them I think is to borrow like $50 or something uh, or to like, uh, like go and ask Burger King if you can wash their windows or something, just like really bizarre stuff mm -hmm. that, that you expect to be, uh, rejected against and they are mostly targeting like um, like startup founders or, or people who feel like they are not doing as well as they should be doing in sales and I have a call with them tomorrow afternoon to go over some more details wow oh that's it's really awesome you should check yeah. out the TED talk then <laughs> I totally will yeah what, what was the guy's name uh uh, uh <laughs> Zhai Zhang that's, that's all I'm going to go with that's that's the best I got is <laughs> There, there's a link in the show notes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Killing me right now. Killing me. <laughs> um, Take a note. <laughs> <laughs> So, Brett, earlier you were saying that, that you're kind of a geeky guy and like doing geeky things. You guys are breaking up a little bit. Yeah. Try to do okay. too many things. Uh, uh, say that again. Uh, I, I was just saying that, that earlier you, you said that you were kind of a geeky guy and like doing geeky things. Uh, uh-huh. I found this, this cool website. It's called geekandgamergear.com. I don't know that they have any anything in particular in there for door geeks. Mm-hmm. But we're it's, we're a, we're a niche. Uh, we don't want those hipsters around that all that come around discovering things. <laughs> right. Those guys. We want to keep it small and cool. <laughs> so, all of you listeners out there, if if you're interested in doors and you, and you want to see if if uh, you can find some geeky stuff for doors uh, for sale, go to geekandgamergear.com. That's geek the letter n gamergear.com. Check it out. There's all sorts of really cool geeky things there's toys there's electronics uh hey, there's gaming supplies hey, hey kent yeah i just went there and did a search for door and the <laughs> i found a lord of the rings hobbit door locket oh Bam. go it's the perfect thing for brett <laughs> and hey brett check this out if you merry christmas to me <laughs> if you want to get this item and, and get yourself an early christmas present you can go to geekandgamergear.com fill up your cart with whatever whatever door geekiness that you can find, and if you use the the code Ritual Misery, all one word at checkout, you get a ten percent discount off your entire order. Hell yeah, nine dollar door locket. <laughs> like, bring it. <laughs> or, or or how about this? The Mortal Instruments City of Bones Portal Door Necklace. I don't know <laughs> oh what God. any of that is, but it sounds way cooler. Who knew door necklaces were such a big thing? <laughs> Damn. I, I had no idea. His, Brett just found his new shopping site. Forget <laughs> Amazon. <laughs> He's going to gamergear.com. Man. Oh, winning all day. So good. Uh, hey, I just remembered another thing that plays into your rejection list thing. Do you guys know where the name Amtrekker came from? Are you familiar with my story? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, maybe. I mean, it, Maybe. <laughs> We 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 <laughs> might we might have we might have seen some clips on YouTube and uh, read a site and uh, you know we, we're into, Actually, we're into Brett, lists and things so like it it just kind of yeah. naturally came around you know it's no big close deal. enough pretend that we don't know your your story <laughs> kind of give us a little little background on what Amtrak is oh I don't I don't want to go too in depth I was just curious if you if you knew but uh, basically but, I I was working for so, Disney at the time and I made a list of fifty things that I wanted to do. And I told everyone I wasn't going to come home until I did all 50 things. I wasn't going to spend any money on lodging. And it was a, a, the kind of thing that I thought would take like a few months. And instead, I ended up homeless for two years, wandering around North America, crossing all these wacky things off my list. But talk about getting good at being rejected. Man, <laughs> that was intense. Yeah, I can imagine. Because, I mean, you had some you had some kind of silly things that, that you had on there. I think... Um, uh, riding an ostrich was uh, yeah. was that one of the items on your list? How yeah. long did that how long did that take to get accomplished? Uh, to set up, it was one of the more difficult things. But once I found a guy who who uh, like travels around the country with a flock of ostriches that he races, <laughs> it was pretty simple <laughs> from there. But uh, but then I ended up crashing two ostriches. I don't know that you could say I rode one so much as I like. Balanced on one long enough to drive it into a fence. <laughs> that is absolutely amazing. So, I've, since we're talking about the the Amtrekker uh, list of fifty uh, tasks, I did want to ask you about one item that no, you that no, I know. Number twenty one. Was it number twenty one? I'm looking at the list, man. I, like I don't know. Why, <laughs> I don't. I, I don't. I don't you know why do you don't homework? have this stuff. Look, look. I may be a shitty host, but I'm an all right producer. All right, that's how it goes. <laughs> so, the, the whole idea of getting Brett on here, the, what what kind of inspired me to to reach out to Brett was after the election, and uh, we as a country decided that Donald Trump would be the um, person best suited to be our leader. Like has wait wait has there ever been a time when everybody woke up from from uh, from from prom and was like ah, f- what well, ah, <laughs> like, like the entire the entire class of nineteen eighty two was just like nah that 
<laughs> like, you're not serious. That's not what happened, right? <laughs> like, I, completely unrelated. The thought just occurred to me. Like, it was just, you know, just a random thought. Not, not related to this conversation at all. I'm just wondering if there's ever been a, a mass disappointment. Like, oh, I, it, it's daily. I'm sure it's daily. <laughs> uh, no, but so a lot of people, at least the people that I follow, are, are kind of, a, you know, a left leaning crowd. We'll just kind of say uh-huh. that. And a lot of people were, were tweeting about, you know, like, oh, man, what do we do now? You know, like the day after what? kind of uh, remorse, I guess. And yeah. somebody somebody posted a link to something that I hadn't seen in quite some time. And it was when you were on, uh, oh, my gosh, I don't know. Was it Good Morning America or something? Yeah. And you you fulfilled one of the items on your list that was directly yep. related to to that. I was going to ask you what it felt like to fire the most powerful person in the, in the world <laughs> <laughs> or who it was it's out to be. <laughs> it was really surreal because uh, like the context that isn't portrayed in the video is that it was like five o'clock in the morning in New York and I didn't know that Donald Trump was going to be on Good Morning America. Like, uh, he was just uh, a phone-in. And the day before, so the story that I heard, and I, I, I don't know how true it is, but the story I heard was that Diane Sawyer saw a bit about me on CNN and then was like, hey, this kid is really cool. We should get him on Good Morning America. And so one of the producers went on my website and was like, oh, shit, he's in New York right now. And so everyone panicked and tried to get a hold of me. And so I was I was in the subway for about 45 minutes. And in that 45 minute span, I had three missed calls, two voicemails, a Facebook message, a MySpace message. My mother, my aunt, and my sister had all been called, including my mom's business. So they like did a full court press trying to find me in this one 45 minute span, afraid that I was gonna leave New York before they got a hold of me. And so I got up out of the Safeway and like every piece of electronics I had started exploding. And then, uh, and then they called up and we did like this little pre-interview thing. And they're like, great, we're sending a car to pick you up at, uh, at 4 a.m. tomorrow morning. And I was like, awesome. And they're like, where are you staying? And I was like, let me call you back. <laughs> <laughs> oh man that is that's that's really cool um, um yeah because that was part of your thing that you you couldn't like purchase lodging you had to rely on the the kindness of others yeah or or or, yeah, or, and, or the not kindness you know right yes <laughs> occasionally i slept on like park benches or like there was a lot of sleeping in bus stations and train stations yeah but also once i was places uh like couch surfing was an invaluable resource for like the first third of the trip. And then the site got big enough that after that, it was kind of more like I would get invited places. And the difficult part was just trying to get from point A to point B. Now through all that, and this is one of the things that I'd love to ask Darren kitchen too, if he ever, if he ever responds, uh, if he ever comes on the show rather, uh, th- cause at one time he drove across the country from what New York or whatever out to the, to the yeah. Bay and he was on his motorcycle and he couch surfed the entire way. Um, mm-hmm. what, what experience, like if you could nail it down to one experience that you, you aren't sure how you got out of like that one situation, <laughs> you're just like, Oh man, this is why, how am I, why am I here? This, this is not the way tonight was supposed this to go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what? I would say, I would say I, I've, I probably stayed on, I don't know, a hundred people's couches over the course of two years. Uh, and I only had one sketchy experience that entire time. And even that sketchy experience, the guy totally saved my life. Like I would have just been like sleeping under a random pier in West Palm beach somewhere, like hoping that I didn't drown in the middle of the night when the waves came up. Uh, so like I still in my head kind of thank him for being there, even though I wanted to get out of the situation as quickly as possible. But I, I am all about couch surfing. It's such a great way to, like, one, a free place to stay. You can't turn that down. But two, it's someone who knows the area very well. They live there, and they're intimate with the area. And they also have something in common with you right off the bat. They also love travel, and they also love meeting new people. So you end up with, like, a, a like maybe not a good friend, but a quasi-friend slash tour guide as soon as you show up. It's great. That sounds yeah. awesome. No, that, 
I, I, I love that because I, I'm such a fan of like the Airbnb concept. Mm. When I lived in Europe, we had a thing. It was actually run through a British company. I lived in Germany for five years and there was this British company, but they had, uh, it was basically like an Airbnb service for all of Europe. And instead of like when I would go visit places like Paris or Rome or, or what have you, like I didn't do the hotel thing. I would do, I would use this service where you would basically just rent out someone's apartment. Because mm-hmm. uh, me now, granted, it's not free. It's not like couch surfing. Um, but you get the the. Not only is it cheaper in the long run uh, than a hotel, but you also get this genuine experience of the city. Because one of the things, at least for me, with travel. Like when I went to Paris, I want to see what it's really like in Paris, not what yeah. the inside of a hotel in Paris looks like. You know, and it's just really cool to to be right there with with actual French neighbors. Uh, go downstairs and around the corner to the little uh, the little grocery, and then you go a little you know halfway down the block, and there's just this little uh, bakery that you get your fresh bread from. That is such a richer experience to me, uh, and, and yeah better way to just really get a feel for a place and learn things than a hotel hotels are stupid. <laughs> yeah i love it i'm actually not a giant fan of airbnb because i love couch surfing so much like i don't mind airbnb if you're renting out an entire apartment or something but if i'm paying to rent a room then all of a sudden i feel like i'm paying I'm, I'm getting the worst of all worlds. I have to pay as though it were a hotel and now i also have to live in someone else's space Right. When I like I don't mind living in someone else's space if I'm there to like make a friend and do stuff. But if you're Airbnb, I feel like that's not necessarily the point. I don't know. Maybe it's just stupid hang up on my part. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm a big fan of Airbnb just because uh, nobody in Austin had space for me and Kent at uh, South by. And now <laughs> we're going to be there <laughs> sleeping yep. on someone else's bed, renting out a room. <laughs> <laughs> So um, that's just me. I, I I'm not the kind of person to just crash at someone's house. I'm I'm like hypercritical. So, <laughs> and especially people that I like, like on the internet, like Kent went out and, and visited uh, hot beverages for for a weekend or whatever when he was out in Kentucky, and it was great. But I'm that kind of person. Like I go into somebody's house and I'm like, this is this, this is where I'm gonna stay. Like. <laughs> I think like two hours. I alone. love that. Like the weirder it is, the happier I am. <laughs> Those places are great. <laughs> now, the, the thing about Hot Beverages place, though, like you know, it's it's super clean, super organized, and it's just it's it. You know, she keeps her place up really nice. Right. The, the thing about it is that we were only there for like the time that I was sleeping, because I went there for a di- it was like a mini Diamond Club meetup. Uh-huh. And uh, like we did a recording of a podcast for Oktoberfest and all this, all this sort of stuff in Cincinnati. And uh, yeah, so the only time that I was in her apartment was when it was sleep time. So I got up. It was like, cool. I'll um, sure I'll have a glass of orange juice. And uh, all right. Thanks for letting me stay on your couch. <laughs> you know? yeah. I stayed in a place in uh, in Salt Lake City where I I basically slept on the mat you fall on if you don't climb a wall well. So they had like a little rock climbing wall in their basement. And then the mat is my, was my bed that night. And that to me, just like, you don't get stories like that in a hotel. Like why, why would you ever do anything any other way? Life is about collecting ridiculous stories. I slip on egg crates, uh, a mattress made of double egg crates for most of high school. So on the floor of my grandpa's, bedroom <laughs> i'm not I'm not, like i i might be a little traumatized because i'm I, I don't stay at anything less than a marriott now jeez <laughs> <Yeah, geez. laughs> like i just I, I went completely the opposite direction instead of being like oh this is like a return to my roots it's like no fu- no i'm not i'm not doing it not doing it it's, <laughs> nope it's fair no I'm, 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 I'm gonna lay down in a bed that smothers me as i lay down into it uh <laughs> I like my one superpower is being uncomfortable. <laughs> it doesn't matter if it's in a physical way or in a social way. The one thing I am best at is being uncomfortable. Oh, I love social awkwardness. Like being in a group, meeting meeting one person for the first time, and then all of a sudden they're my best friend because it's the only person I know. That's how I met Richard Gunther. And here it is years <laughs> later, and we're, we're great friends, you know? 
And so awkward social awkward situations, I am I, I thrive on them. It it makes me very happy to be able to say something in a group that stops the entire group from like, wait, did he it's, just say that? You know, you know, during a movie with the the, re- the record scratch when somebody says something really messed up and there's that record scratch in a silence, like it, that happens to Amos in real life, <laughs> <laughs> like probably at least weekly. I wonder how many movies that's happened in. Like, what is the record scratch tipping point where that becomes such a part of the social commentary that we <laughs> know what you're talking about when you say that? How many times did they have to use that trope before we were like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> what point in time did it become a trope? Yeah. And, and on, I, on that, on that, what was the first time it was used? And what movie has it used the most times? These are things that we need to know right now in the world. This is prescient. <laughs> To today's world right now this sounds like a good alexa thing for- answer my questions <laughs> <laughs> oh man but amos you were speaking about richard gunther which is interesting because he is going to be on our show in two weeks two weeks yep. looking forward to that next week's guest oh though, man I'm, we- I'm, I'm psyched about this one too Oh yeah, this is really amazing. Like, just, like I'm the psycho, up. I'm the crazy, I'm the insane. That's it. Doesn't come from the guests at all. It's like I'm. I get super jazzed that they're going to be on our podcast, and I get to like, like now if 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 I ever meet you in person, it's like, oh hey, what's up, Brett? It's not like, uh, hi Brett. Um, I'm this guy that uses your app and like kind of likes how the the shit you did as the Amtrekker, and you know, like like all that's out of the way. Like we are immediately like we hey hey Brett, how you going? You know, like it's it's an immediate thing, and that's one of the, my favorite aspects of this. Just for the record, I love the people that walk up to me and are like, "Hey, Brett, I uh, I love your app, and I, I think I've seen you somewhere." Those people are great. Don't you dare talk down about those people. Oh no 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 no! I'm not insulting them at all. I'm saying that I no longer have to be one. Like that's how I'm going to introduce myself to Brett. Now. <laughs> there you go. And Even like our fifth meeting, our fifth meeting, yeah. I was like, oh, hey, hi, Brett. Fifth, uh, <laughs> fifth, fifth meeting at the same con. Hey, Brett, uh, like, I'm the guy. Did you just say you guys are going to be at South by this coming year? We're going to be at South yes. by and Nurtacular this year. Like, we're, oh, right we're double dipping. We're, we didn't get the triumvirate. We're not going to be Dragon Con as of yet. As but, of yet. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, uh, it's, uh, I, I still haven't nailed down whether or not I'll be at either. Like, uh, South by happens during my wife's birthday and, uh, nerdtacular happens during my baby's birthday. Uh, Ooh. see, yeah, uh, yeah. South by happens just before my birthday and nerdtacular happens during my wife's birthday. So and just after my birthday, it, it, just before or just, but yo, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My bad. <laughs> Jeez, I was thinking dude. my birthday is just after. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> like you Rainy. gotta at least remember your own birthday. You may not be able to remember how old you are, but at least gotta remember what day it is. <laughs> Especially when it's the day before a major holiday. Like you know, it's it's it's. You know, in, in all, Amos, in all of your excitement, we didn't announce who next week's guest is. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. See, I told you. <laughs> Sorry, told you. <laughs> I can't handle We've got pressure. John Teasdale. We we have John Teasdale, uh, a podcaster, a uh, co-creator of the Contender card game um really cool talented funny guy really looking forward to having him on and the guy whose house i'm playing board games at on sunday oh there you go there you go you can talk about us yeah. like, these guys were assholes and yeah. idiots and <laughs> like, like, you know, be drunk before you get there those guys are idiots man I'm, I'm, I'm actually looking forward so can't me and you have an opposite opinion on john teasdale a very very opposite opinion on one aspect of john Okay. I'm looking forward to taking every opportunity I can to make him laugh, and you are dreading every laugh he does. Because (laughs) (laughs) I find his laugh utterly contagious and hilarious. Ah. And every time he laughs and I see your face, you're just like, oh. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. Way to call me out on that one. Uh, Uh, Look, our our guests don't listen to our show anyway, so it doesn't matter. Like, it. (laughs) <laughs> uh, he won't listen point. to the show until after he's been on it and realizes it's it's better than than the name the, the name sounds. Yeah, exactly. That's a that's one advantage to having the name Ritual Misery. Yeah. So when people <laughs> actually listen to it, they're like, "Oh man, this is terrible." So anything above that, we're good. We're yeah. Good. Um, Life is all about expectations and outcomes. This <laughs> week, um, this week, I think maybe was it today or yesterday, uh, Weird Al posted a, his letter that he got from Doctor Demeno. Saying, ah, I see. It, it, it was his uh, was his blown, blowny letter, saying, "Hey, yes. this is a great song. Um, 
and just keep on going or whatever, you know. And and, and he, it, Weird Al said that was that's when he re, he realized that, you know, this is th- this is I've made it. Life is never going to get any better than this right here. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I got to tell you, if it comes to ritual misery, man, if you really want to know the definition, it's this continuous slog through life, knowing that we are having fun and we are we're we're doing something awesome, and not having our baloney letter yet. That's that's what the ritual well, misery that's, really means. And that's the thing. every milestone that we hit feels like a baloney letter. Yeah. Like you know, getting invited to to stream on DC TV, um, getting like some of the amazing guests that we've gotten on here, uh, Scott Johnson and and Tom Merritt telling us that we're no longer in beta. Uh, you know, like <laughs> every like every milestone. You know, getting the Amtrekker on on our show, like all of these things. Are, are huge milestones that absolutely feel like the below the letter. Yeah. So uh, every, every week is, uh, you know, I'm, I'm amazed at the things that we do on the show. All baloney all the time. <laughs> that's right. That's, now, I, I, have, I have You two. can use that as your tagline now if you guys want. <laughs> all, all, all baloney all the time. We have two things to cover. Two things. I've got a question, and then we've got a, got a little bit of an event to go. Um, Brett, there, you've got 50 items on your list. I don't know how you mm-hmm. came up with the number 50. I'm, I'm assuming it's just an arbitrary number. Maybe you had a, a $50 bill in your pocket, and you're like, you know what? That's a good number. We're going to go with that. Or maybe you're like, you know what? I'm nice, I like nice round numbers, and 100 is just too many. I'm going to cut it down to 50. What would number 51 be? Oh, I, I actually I know hands down, and it sounds stupid, but the thing that always makes the top of the list whenever I write another list is I really want to clean windows on a skyscraper. <laughs> Okay. Totally legit. That is my honest to God answer. I would love to go up on one of those big slings and wash some windows, or better yet, one of those where it's just you in the sling, like a little, like a little uh, harness, and yeah. you're hanging hanging down from the top of the window and washing. Oh man, I want to try that so bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. There's no way in hell you're getting me up there. Not a chance. <laughs> More power oh, to you. So Brett, we have we have one more thing to cover, uh, but but before we do that, where can people find more about you on the internet? Uh, I'm very easy to find. If you look for me as Amtrekker on Twitter, A M T R E K K E R, then I, I say way too many things on there. Uh, <laughs> I think that's the point of Twitter, is just to say too many things. Because that... um, also, also you can go to the App Store and download Mission Pick. Yeah. Big update Please. coming very soon for that. Yeah, big uh, update yeah. and a big promo on uh, for a New Year's Eve challenge. Oh. Perfect. We we can probably incorporate that into our big New Year's Eve streamathon. There we go. Uh, oh, cool. Speaking of yeah. the streamathon, know all about. It. Speaking of the streamathon, we're raising money for extralife.org, and there are some major announcements coming soon. We're going to have a probably. Probably about the middle of next week, we are going to have a schedule published for everyone to go take a look at, see when your favorite streamers are going to be on. It's going to be such a fun event. Uh, it's going to be awesome for the streamers and for anybody watching. It's just going to be awesome, and I can't wait. And, Brett, I would love it if you were a part of it, even if you just came and, and hung out in chat room and talked with people. Uh, that would be a, a super cool thing. Uh, we can talk more about that later. But we have one more thing to cover. Amos, do you want to give a little background on on what this thing is? Uh, so uh, so we're doing what we call ritual livery. Uh, we, we take a bunch of words from the podcast. We throw it into a spreadsheet. It kicks out a little story. And that story is typically something related to the uh, guest that we have on that week. This week's topic is impeachment, being that you have, uh, you're the only person to fire the, the, the oncoming president. <laughs> Uh, we thought that'd be an appropriate topic, and Kent, would you like to read this one. Yes. Oh, all right. So th- th- this is this is your story, made from words that were mined from our conversation over the last hour. So here we go. Interesting. A diaper can be impeached for any number of reasons, including lying to the United States door geek, directly abusing his powers to squeak, negative temperatures, making insane. Remarks regarding rejectionathons, or otherwise behaving in a verbal manner. If the diaper is impeached by the House of Friends, 
a trial in the Senate could follow, presided over by the chief list of the desensitized court. After really weighing the tasks, senators will raise their assholes and cast the vote of either ecstatic or not ecstatic. Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Was that like a Mad Lib? Uh, like you it, already have a story written and then it just fills it in? Uh, it's exactly yeah, what yeah, yeah. Uh, That's pretty much what it is. Nice. I love it. That's a cool idea. Go, go buy your Mad Libs. They're awesome. <laughs> or, uh, um, yeah, that's something we started a couple of months back and we've kind of stuck with it because uh, it, it's, it's uh, Amos, where can people find more of you? Man, I'm, I'm on the Twitter at Ethan Kane. Uh, pretty much all, all that you need to know. You can't touch you. <laughs> yeah, Twitter is by far the best place to look, look for what I'm doing. That is at RM underscore Del Noche. Uh, for the beer geeks out there, if you're in craft beer, you can go to ratebeer.com, look up username Del Noche, and you can read my 500 plus craft beer reviews. Wow. Yeah, he's 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 been doing it for a while. Um, yeah, for, for a bit. <laughs> you can also find the show at Ritual Misery on the Twitter. You can visit ritualmisery.com to get all the cool swag uh, as we start updating the swag because. Like, oh yeah, you want if a if you want a hashtag still in beta T-shirt, you need to get it now because we've got what about two weeks left of that being on sale, Amos. Not even that, not even that. So make sure you go by there and get that. And of course, um, thank you to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your theme music. It's pretty awesome. Cruise on over to incomtech.com or yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. I'm gonna remember all this shit one day. And uh, thank you for listening for Kent. For Brett, for me, and for you, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. See ya. Bye-bye. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>